Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, in this uh, episode, I want to share with you how you can build your very own, really cool, very high-tech Excel dashboard based on very simple tools using pivot tables and pivot charts. You don't need any VBA, you don't need anything. Just a little bit of slicers, a little bit of timelines, some good old-fashioned Excel formulas. And you can get something really cool that you can use for whatever analysis you want to prepare. Um, my name is Adan. Um, I've been using Excel for more than 10 years. I've always been the Excel go-to guy in the office. And for the past year, I've been also working as a uh, freelancer um, and helping people around the world with their Excel and office issues and opportunities. And I've decided to start my very own YouTube channel to share a little bit about um, you know what you can do with Excel so let's start from the finish I'll zoom out a bit so this is a very nice dashboard you have four different charts you have two slicers and you have two timelines this is called a slicer and I'll show you everything in a minute but just to give you a quick glimpse so if I select a certain in this case information is about customers and their uh, NPS score so if I select one everything changes if I select a certain date everything changes okay so it's very cool very nice very easy to do let's just jump into it so let's assume you have data the orange columns are your data everything here is dummy data that I created it's based on a, on a project that I did for a customer in Logic, but everything here is just made up data. I have the customer rep name, which is taken from a internet fake uh, uh, you know, name generator. I just gave something called rep uh, label level, sorry, to each uh, customer rep. The customer name, again, from the same you know, uh, fake source. Country of the customer. What was the classification? What was the result? Promoter, passive or detractor. What was the date? And the type of service. So out of all of this, you don't need to have all these you know, columns and very complicated data, so to speak, but you must have a date column. If, the date, if you don't have a date column, then you're going to have a lot of trouble creating a dashboard. And I'll post a video on how to manipulate data because sometimes you do have a date, but it's not showing as an Excel date. So I'm going to post a video on that next week, hopefully. But assuming you have a data and it's nice and okay, usually I add, you know, calculated columns that, you know, you just drag and whenever you change the data, they're updated. Uh, so in this case, um, I took the uh, you know the row which is the promoter or passive or detractor and I created a uh, column with the data why because I'm going to use it shortly and it's important it's easier for me to do it this way since I wanted to capture each of them as their own value so very simple code if this if this cell equals this cell with a dollar sign then it's one otherwise zero and the total sums it up I also have a column which I always, almost always use, is called any quantity. And so only I only want lines that have any value. So if there were like, uh, you know, garbage columns, it's just, sorry, garbage rows or rows that didn't make sense, this is where I'd be able to filter them out. And also this helps me in case I have, in case I drag the formula, I have, you know, let's say I drag the formula all the way here. So these rows won't impact uh, and won't show because I'll be able to filter them out. So this is like the data, your source data, a little bit of helping columns just for, for our specific analysis. Then usually you should start building some pivot tables because the pivot tables are the ones that are going to build the charts. Um, and we can do it, you know, together. So usually what I do, I go ahead and I flag 
or mark you see that when the arrow turns into black I like to pick up the entire column for the pivot table because that way I don't care how many rows there are so I flagged uh, I marked all the columns with the uh, black I click on insert and pivot table you see now it's showing as the column itself so you don't need to change that I always have used I always use a new worksheet for the first one and I click OK. And now we can just create whatever we want. So just to follow my, my example here, I have the name of the customer rep and the NPS score. So I'm going to use the customer rep. Now you notice I don't have this data. I don't have the NPS score. And actually, I can't calculate it by, by row because, you know, the NPS score for the customer rep uh, is going to be a combination of a lot of rows. Moreover, if I want something that has a lot of flexibility, I need to be able to have a lot of flexibility. <laughs> the good thing is that in Pivot, uh, they have a really great function called calculated field. And calculated field basically lets you add calculations it's limited um in power pivot actually you have more options but you know for for this t for this uh, for this exercise this will be enough so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a column called nps score you see i'll just recreate it so sorry let's just do it all over it's just called nps score number two okay and i can start using all the fields this is why I wanted to separate the fields. So I'm going to take promoters divided by total minus detractors divided by total. Okay. Click OK. And I get a score. And I can just change that to percentage if I want. Make it a little bit more nice. And what's nice is now that I have this calculated field, Whatever I drag and whatever I, however I build the table, it's going to recalculate it on the fly. So this is the total score. This is the score per country. This is the score per rep level. Whatever I do here. So I got the customer score over here. Now I want to create the date. So I only have one date. Date survey completed. Now when I drag it here, you can see that it doesn't look that nice. It's got the month. So what I'm going to do, right click, group, and you have all sorts of options here. I usually don't change that, but you could if you want. And I usually use, use month and year. And now you get um, a much better view. Now this ugly part <laughs> is why I have that any quantity field. Just add it over here, switch to yes. And there you go, much nicer. Now, since we're building a chart, the layout of the table is not that important. But in case you don't like subtotals, you can just go here to design. Subtotals do not show subtotals. Or you can. Okay, up to you. So, in the group, you can also show by quarter if you want. Okay, Q4, Q1, Q2 whatever you want or you can ungroup and it's going to show you all the dates which is not what you want okay usually people like to look at month year or quarter year so this is how I built the first one see same result same data that would be this chart now how do we connect how we how do we build the chart you click anywhere on the pivot table and you click insert and you enter, insert a chart. Okay, that easy. I created the chart. Now, I usually don't like all these filters. I like to use the slicers, which I'll show you later on. So, Control, I click on right, right, uh, right click on one of them, one of those gray uh, buttons, and I click on Hide All Field Buttons on Charts. Okay, because I don't like to use them. Some people do. Maybe you do. Then I usually usually have a you know very um, 
uh, steady flow of how I build my charts. I usually put the legend on the bottom. I usually, uh, I don't always have data label. In this case, I won't put data label because there's too much. But I like to put a chart title. And I like to do, I like to have the chart title above the pivot, which is building it. In this case, NPS score by customer rep. Why? Because that way it makes it very easy for me to change the headline. And um, yeah, that's the main reason. It's very easy for me. Sometimes I connect it to the data so I can I can really use this, for example. All right. Um, by the way, you can also change the data here. So if you want, if you don't like the all of the text here, you can just I won't let you use the same data um, name as the field that you have. What I usually do is just, I just click once on the spacebar, and now I can do it. So this is why I like to use uh, referencing the chart title. So this is really exactly what you have over here. So uh, the next step, or you know what, what I do afterwards, for example, is I create another chart. Or you know what, let's move this to the dashboard. I just click on the chart, Control X, X, copy paste or cut paste. And now I have the chart over here, the pivot table is over here. Usually I hide the pivot tables and I only show the charts because that's what people like to see. Okay, now let's do another one. Um, so what I do, I usually just copy the pivot table. Now what is important is that you leave some spaces between. Why? Pivot tables cannot overlap. If you put the pivot table over here and next time you have like 20 more reps, it will give you an error that you're overlapping tables. So make some, have some gaps between your tables. And for example, here I can, let's say, use the country. So I want to see country. And let's say I don't want to see a certain data. I just want to see the total. And I can all build another chart. I can build, I don't know, something like this, a more basic chart. And in this case, I actually will add data labels. Okay, and I don't even need a legend. So it varies. So here I can write just, you know, uh, NPS, sorry, NPS score by country. Put that and take this one all the way here. Okay, nice and easy. I can click on X here. All right. Now the last nice part, as you can imagine, you can build a lot of charts. Here I just created, you know, for stacked pie chart, you know, reverse stack, a reverse stack column, sorry. You can do whatever you want, it's endless. What's nice, what I want to show you is how to use slicers and timelines. So I click anywhere on the pivot table, click on insert, click on slicer. Now it asks me what to build the slicer on. So let's do like, uh, I don't know, rep level. Now, Right clicking on the slicer, you can see report connections. Now, basically, it asks you to which other pivot tables you want this to be connected. It shows you the name and the sheet. Now, I don't. Now, it's always going to allow you to connect to other pivot tables that are all based on the same data. If you'd have even a slight difference between the pivot tables, like you have one more column or absolutely different data, it will not appear over here. Once I click OK, now both of them, this one and this one, let me just delete these ones so you can see both together. So now if I click, it just changes. And as you can imagine, the trick is you take the slicer and you just put it next to your charts. OK. And now the slicer really changes your charts. This is 
and that no, no slicer is for data and the other really nice option that you have in pivot tables and charts is adding a timeline and you see timeline you only have one option in this case because it only works on dates that's why it's so important to have dates even if you don't want to see data by date so again right click and report connection connect to the other one Cut it and paste. Okay. Of course, you can change the dimensions. Now, what's nice about Slicer that you can also change the uh, bucket, like show me 2021. It's also nice, I can duplicate the Slicer. This is so I'm going to have one by year, one by month. So I can go 2021, show me just May, show me just April. You see, everything changed. Bring it back. Slicers, you can select more than one. Just click on Control and reselect. This one clears all. You can also have some options like multi select means that basically you're, you're constantly pressing Control if you hit this number, this uh, option. I, I don't use it. So these are the basics on how you can build charts with slicers and timeline and create a really nice, really um, user-friendly dashboard. This is like the end result, a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, more invested, a little bit more time with it, but it's the same method. You build a chart, you add it, uh, you build a pivot table, sorry, like so. You add the chart to it, like so, and you add the slicers and timeline. That's all it is. The, the, the notion is that once you have more data, like uh, let's say I just add a few more lines, okay? I just have the date running. So you can, you can drag, or in this case I dragged it way more. So you, let's assume you dragged all the columns, all the, all the data, okay? And let me just show you so I have uh, one for July now, okay? So here you see I don't have any data for July, okay? And you can just click on data, refresh all. All right, now everything's refreshed. Now I do have July. These are the, well, this line actually, okay? That's why it's a very, very nice tool, especially for refreshing information. Okay, so this was, I think, kind of detailed. Um, feel free to leave your comment if you have any questions. I will uh, make sure to read the comments and answer you. And also, if you have more topics, things that you want to see, you want me to investigate, you want me to share a, a detailed video, let me know, and I'll be sure to do that. Um, so, you know, my intention is to uh, be here for the community and teach. I like teaching. I like Excel. Um, and hopefully grow, grow, and grow, and, you know, um, start building something together. All right. So make sure to like, subscribe, keep watching. I'll be posting no new videos weekly. Talk to you.